Well, hello there, beautiful. It's Kylie Patchett here and welcome to the wild and finally fecking free podcast. I deeply believe that the years during and beyond perimenopause are a rite of passage. All of a sudden we find ourselves on the precipice of a life transition where our brain literally rewires and runs out of fucks to give. We find ourselves shifting identity, no longer caring what other people think and being invited to expand into new ways of being. Here, we share the real and raw stories from women who have been through deep midlife metamorphosis, taken a leap of faith or broken the ties that bind us in patterns of staying small, stuck and like our needs just don't matter. This is the midlife medicine you didn't even know you needed. Stories full of joy, despair, freedom, courage and deep self-honouring. I am so glad you found us. Welcome. It's Kylie and I am welcoming today to the world and finally fucking free podcast, a beautiful woman I've been connected to for quite some time. God, decades would be decades, maybe one and a bit decades. The beautiful Bella Payne from the sunny coast. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Ah, so cool. I've been looking forward to this chat because um, Bella, yeah, I've, I've been observing even in my time out of entrepreneurship, um, Bella just keep on stepping into her freaking brand of, I'm going to say magic, and I do that quite consciously. So Mm -hmm. um, how would you like to introduce yourself? Um, Okay. Well, as you said, I'm Bella. Bella being my magical name, Mm -hmm. uh, Belinda, my birth name. Mm -hmm. Um, So I basically, my business is Wicked, Mm -hmm. um, and I have magical holistic therapies. Mm -hmm. I basically have a studio on the Sunshine Coast where I see people in person and I do a lot of stuff online, offering circles and retreats um, and magical products and one-on-one mentor sessions. And um, I have to say that a lot of what my business has evolved into, which I'm sure we'll talk about at some point, is thanks to you, Miss Kylie. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Yeah, from our long association and things that we've done together is actually really helped me step into this thank you that's a beautiful thing to say because it's been a beautiful thing for me to watch you becoming like more and more unapologetically fucking Bella like (laughs) like I've just always been inspired by your connection to the magic in this world quite literally um Mm. so when when I first connected with you my um Geez, you've done makeup for me for photos, like all sorts of different things. I know. But how you used to be in business um, was that you provided facials, nails, et cetera, like a beauty service. Yep. And there was always this extra depth of it's like I want women to, to, you know, to help women feel um, like they're taking care of themselves and taking a bit of time out and grounded in you know, um, their, I guess, self-care, but there was always this depth underneath it. It's like, bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. And now, so many years later, um, mm. you just provide such a, like I was saying to you before we started recording, I feel like there's a lot of women that feel like they've got some sort of power or ancient knowing or something inside of them but it's almost like there's too much conditioning on top of it to say, oh, that's not, you know, it's a bit too woo-woo or a bit out there or a bit whatever. And one of the things you said when you answered the call to interview is I want to talk about coming out of the broom closet. <laughs> please please describe for our listeners what you mean. <laughs> okay, so basically, as you say, I used to do makeup, nails and beauty was my thing. Yep. Um, that's how you and I met. Like mm-hmm. I was had that business hat on yes um and because you're right what I really wanted to do and I just I guess I didn't know how to articulate it um externally at the time was I wanted to make women feel good essentially Mm -hmm. I wanted them to feel more confident and more beautiful in who they are and that was working externally as you say that was about Mm -hmm. making them feel like they had nice skin and Mm -hmm. nice nails and things like that Mm -hmm. In the background, I've been a practicing witch for over 28 years. And so I've always had that spirituality, the groundedness in my spirituality. Mm-hmm. 
And I found that even with my beauty clients, you know, you could have those conversations because they would say something that would trigger a conversation yes. naturally about magic and spirituality. And so um, basically I, I started to slowly bring spirituality into my business because I realised it's what women wanted to talk about, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, that sort of started coming in and then I actually had somebody because I had a separate page that's called Wicked Women Goddess Circle yes. and that's where I just shared all my favourite witchy things, you mm-hmm. know, like magical mm-hmm. things. And I started to feel like I had two identities mm-hmm. and, and I started to really struggle with that because I had my my beauty business, which at the time was called Bella More, mm-hmm. and then I had this witchy page and so I felt like I was being split down the middle. Yeah. While at the same time still feeling authentic because I'm always just me, you know, yes. I'm, I, I am who I am. Anyway, yeah, I actually had someone contact me through my um, Goddess Circle page and ask could I mentor them in magical stuff and I was so blown away by that. And by then I'd, I was already running circles and things like in addition to my beauty things and it was becoming, evolving over a few years to become about holistic yes. um, holistic self-care and honouring self. And I started to realise as my own evolution um, happened that the honouring self and the whole like feeling good part actually was more about the internal rather than the external Mm -hmm. and that's why the spirituality needed to come into it. Mm -hmm. And so when this person asked me um, if I would mentor her in magic, I drove up to Gympie and I went and spent the day with her and within an hour I'd somehow created a 12-month like apprenticeship course, like mapped it out. And and then I just started to get all this inspiration and it's like I've got to change and evolve my business because I'd already been thinking for some time I need to bring the two together and yes. I didn't know how. Yes. And she showed me how. And right at the moment where I said yes to mentoring her and realised that everything was about to change, this is no joke, a wedge tail eagle <gasps> flew down within metres of her back door where we were sitting right squawked loudly and I mean it flew down to within like a meter of the ground it's like boy I know and I was like oh my god and so was she and then it flew up circled around the house and flew off and I went oh my god and wicked was born yeah from that moment and everything came into alignment and I came out of the broom closet yeah and unapologetically said this is who I am I'm rebranding to Wicked because mm-hmm. I've realised every it has to incorporate everything. everything. Spirituality has to be yes. part of what I do. Yep, 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 yep. And I haven't looked back. It's been the best thing that's ever happened to Amazing. me. Amazing. I know um, there's a few things that I want to bring out of that, this uh, the journey because I think that it's quite a common feeling for us to feel like we've got different kind of identities in different circles mm-hmm. I certainly have felt like that where yeah yeah particularly when I found myself back in the corporate box of yeah like these really strong belief systems that I have that is my truth mm-hmm. that was completely not aligned to the corporate world and so it was like I put on a mask do this do that and it's like the um the feeling that we get when we bring all the pieces of us together and we actually uh, the whole of ourselves, that is when magic starts literally to happen uh-huh. because because if you think about it, you know, I remember the days of Bella More and it was a beautiful business, mm. but it wasn't the depth that you were as a whole person. No. And so, of course, the energy and the resonance, it wasn't going to be attracting your perfect fit of client, community, circles of women because you're not being your full self. Like you're not allowing your full self to be seen. And that's why I think, you know, there's so much fear when women think about, you know, can I really say that I'm a witch? Can I really say that (laughs) I actually call in what I want? Like there's, and it's like, well, if you're not, you're never actually going to get what's yours. Like you're never ever going to be able to receive the fullness of the magic that's out there for you and what's meant for you if you block off certain pieces of yourself. 100%. Like that, you know, and it's no surprise to me that you haven't looked back. And it's no surprise to me that the freaking eagle came and said, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oi, just high five. (laughs) 
<laughs> Universal wink in winged form. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so how did like, it... I, well okay. like I said, I started to feel like I was split mm. down the middle and I talked to my husband about it quite a bit mm. and mm. he's like, you have to bring them together. I've been telling you that for ages, but I guess I just didn't know how it looked. Yes. I didn't yeah. know how it felt. And, yes, I will admit 100% that there was a lot of fear there mm-hmm. about being judged. And even though, as I said, I'd already been bringing in spiritual aspects and offer- yes. and started offering, like, healing and circles mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. um, there was a fear there that I'd lose people. People won't like me anymore yep. because, you know, because I'm a witch or because mm-hmm. i you know, bringing spirituality um, so out in the open into my business. Mm. And um, someone said to me once, witches like to get their nails done too. And I went, oh, oh, oh wow, powerful. okay, yes, it was that simple and that powerful. And mm-hmm. I went, oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, and it was just that day when I went and saw that that lady, you know, who was one of my best friends to this day, I'll just say. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I just knew and the fear just fell away and I thought I just can't, this, I have to be my whole self. Mm -hmm. And so that's why with my business I really focus it or call myself a holistic witch. My book is Holistic Witchcraft because I had to step into my wholeness, synchronise all my pieces and bring them all together in order to be able to share authentically with other people that are weird just like me and and now the focus is on making people or helping people to find their own inner magic so they feel good on the inside because when you feel good on the inside you know and you're happy on the inside then your vibration is high and Mm -hmm. you're more beautiful than you've ever been because Mm -hmm. you're just living enjoy yeah and you're magnetic I've actually got a magnetic. sign in, in front of me that says feel good first yes I, that's one of my yes. key and that's really alien for me I'm going to be really honest because my entire life my reference point of myself is get the to-do list done and then there's space mm. to do what you need to do and it's like well that's yes. actually flawed and it comes from a lot of conditioning that's a whole other story but yes um choosing to actually understand that 80 percent of creating anything that we want is just getting into the right energy and vibration. So yeah, feel good first, take care of yourself first. You cannot turn up as the partner, the wife, the business owner, the whatever space holder, particularly like Mm -hmm. if you're holding space for other people, I can take care of yourself (laughs) because you cannot do it in a balanced, healthy way. Um, So how did it feel? So actually let's take a step back. What were, so the fear was about being seen and being judged. Yes. Do you have anything to say about that in terms of um, like it's a bit of a, I don't know, like a buzzword kind of thing that's been out there for a little while about the witch wind? Do you feel like there is a portion of old generational like do not step into your power and be public about it because you will be cut down? Was that true for you? 100% because those are, that's the majority of the clients that I work with. Yeah. So I um I've been doing even when I was still Bella More, I've been doing mm-hmm. belief work and mindset work for mm-hmm. a really long time. And um yes, I would say to you honestly, a huge percentage, like I'm gonna be bold and say 80 to 90 percent of my clients mm-hmm. are women that come to me for a mentor session um or a healing session, and a lot of it is around fear ingrained fear whether that ingrained fear is in their genetics Mm -hmm. or it's societal beliefs that have been placed on them or whatever it is whatever Mm -hmm. their story is um the fear around witchcraft because they've been told that it's evil um and and only evil people practice such things Mm -hmm. um and so it's been conditioned into them and and it's like they want more so like Every one of my clients wants more from life. They know there's more out there, right? They want to fit, they want to feel amazing. Mm -hmm. They want to live their truth. And but Mm -hmm. they they're so full of fear from this conditioning that they've been receiving over their whole lives, possibly through generations, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's and we need to work with that. Mm -hmm. We need to work with changing those beliefs and Mm -hmm. helping them to um, I guess integrate the knowledge and the power of being yourself yes. and that in this day and age 
it's okay to be that. Yeah, absolutely. God, there's so many, so many layers in that because as you're <sighs> talking, what I'm so that it's not, it's not just the, it's not, I mean, it's not just, there's no just in this sentence. It's not simply the witch wound. But no. if we go to that, and I've been doing a lot of like my thing very much so is understanding the shifts in our physiology, our emotional, spiritual health as we enter this perimenopause rite of passage, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of the things that I've become really, really aware of is how dangerous, in inverted commas, a woman mm-hmm. and her power is. Oh, yes. To the to society, to the cops, yes. to the machine, to the patriarchy, to the like every fucking thing. And yes. it's like no wonder we have so much fear about being powerful and being connected to our magic and being able to call in what we want because we literally have, we're swimming in an ocean mm-hmm. of, well, if you swim in the mainstream, which I don't, but <laughs> like, you know, we're swimming in an ocean of messages that say um, stay small, yep, don't speak out loud, be beautiful, be wrinkle-free, be blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, our, the version of being a good woman, a good girl, a good wife, a good yeah. whatever, like fill in the blank here. And so, of course, we've got these painful layers, but I would also say, and I'm sure that you would find the same thing in your healing and mentoring, it's the fucking source of the biggest freedom that we can ever access mm-hmm. is to clear the bullshit stories. Yep. It's like you're not free to create what you want. If you've still got generations and generations of trauma attached to you, or society, like you know, whatever whatever version of conditioning we're talking about, um, so when you had that moment where the the eagle comes to you, and you said the fear fell away, so it was almost like um, what I'm hearing is like you were so sure in your path that mm. like the vision was bigger than the fear. Absolutely, which is a beautiful place to be. So. What have you found to be true then for stepping into this version of your business? Like if you could go back and talk to Bella of Bella More, what Mm. would you be saying to her about what you could access? I'd be saying like do what you really want, what what is sitting in your heart, what is sitting in your soul. Mm -hmm. Share, Share from your truth because despite what you think now, there are people out there who need to hear your words. There are people out there who need to um, be within a circle of women that that are all vibing with this same energy or yeah. who are all um, open to expanding their spirituality, to evolving and to growing, you know. Yeah. Um it just, yeah, as I said, it just becomes the, the roar becomes louder than the fear. Yeah. Of you Ooh, must do this. I love that. Yeah. You 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 need to do this because you know, one of the biggest things that I um that was a real game changer for me, mm-hmm. and I can't remember who said it, it could have been you. Um, and it was along the lines of, you know, basically, how dare you? keep all that to yourself that when nice. there are people yeah <laughs> that is one of my catch cries get yeah. the fuck how- over yourself it is not about you <laughs> exactly how dare you keep this to yourself like do you know how many people need what you what you yeah. can share with them right now yeah. and that was like a big uppercut mm. you know under the chin mm. and it yeah. was like with love stop being so <laughs> bloody selfish yeah you know yeah, yeah. that's the thing but- because like I don't know. This is, and I've said this on this podcast before, but I'm going to keep on saying it because I am a very deep believer that before we come down from wherever we come down, you know, whatever your belief mm-hmm. systems are, when we choose to come here, we are either given or choose a purpose. And we are also d- delivered all the connections and challenges and triumphs and, you know, beauty and joy and everything that it takes for us to deliver it. But it's not like it comes in a fucking package and we just like pull no. the string and ta-da. Yay, here's my gift and I will give it to the world. We actually have to heal shit to be able to actually deliver the gift to the world. But the gift is not about us. No. Yes, it is absolutely beautifully powerful and fulfilling and gorgeous to feel that you are on purpose. Mm -hmm. But the best thing about that is the ripple that it creates. And as women, like, Actually, that is a perfect segue to where I wanted to go as well. So the ripple effect (laughs) for you stepping into the fullness of you, how has that affected 
your relationship with your beautiful man, with your daughters, with, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Where's the ripple going? Oh, oh, well, it's been amazing actually. So, um, you know, my hubby and he's always been a man's man and, Mm -hmm. you know, a a working man, a warrior man. Yep, yep, yep. Um, And he, I think, he went away to work in the mines and he was at the mines, you know, so a FIFO worker for like 10 mm-hmm. years and um, and and it made him very cold uh, and switched off for a long time, yeah. even though I'd been told, you know, from from a very early stage that he was, you know, had quite yes. strong spiritual yeah. um, gifts, yeah. which he Before completely denied, that. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which he yeah. completely denied. But mm-hmm. Over me, by me stepping more into my truth and my power, and by me, he said to me once, you know, I, I had one of those little moments where I'm like, oh, what do you love about me, babe? You know, yeah, yeah. those those little convos, you know, yeah. over a few bevies, and and I've done it to him before, and he's always been he's he struggles with articulation sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah, he, not he unusual say, in the Y chromosome. Population. No, Let's... he wouldn't say that his his gift is communication. Put yeah, it yeah. that way. Um, and anyway, but one time he finally answered me, and he said, "Your he said your deter- determination it inspires me, and it bites me in the ass constantly because once you decide to do something, you bloody do it, and it often affects me or involves me somehow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And anyway, and I I had a laugh, you know, but I realized that was helping him to evolve yeah, and it was helping absolutely. him to step up. Mm-hmm. And and particularly when I published my book and he mm-hmm. was so supportive through that and I think that was when he really saw me and it, like truly saw me and saw and, and it was like he just massively tuned into my energy and saw finally saw my vision and the path I'd laid out for myself and how he could be part of that. And honestly, in that moment was when he started to step up and mm-hmm. evolve. And sometimes, look, let's let's be honest. Not only is he a male, and sorry, guys, that listen to this, but we do evolve at different rates. That is yes, that is truth, right? Yes. yes. Um, so sometimes he kicks and screams because I can see, I know when he's on the brink of his next evolution, and he kicks and screams and carries on. <laughs> but then, and sometimes we have to get to the point where we have a serious discussion or even a big Barney, you yep. know, because yep, yep. because he'll be, when I say kicking and screaming, he'll get angry and resentful yeah, yeah. and, and he'll be, it's, imagine him knocking, like throwing his head around and going, no, no, you know, and then all of a sudden he, he comes through mm. and then, and it is the most magical thing to witness. Yeah. I cannot tell you how amazing it's been for our relationship mm-hmm. in terms, like we're closer than we've ever been. Yeah. He said that. He communicated that to me. He said, I love, you know, what's happened with us. Like we're closer than we've ever been. He's more open to things. Mm-hmm. He helps me with things. He came and helped me at a stall for my business a couple of weeks ago. I could never have imagined him doing that 10 years ago. And he totally did. He literally came and hung out with uh, like hundreds of pagans at this outdoor festival. <laughs> He's like, I'm putting myself right in the arena. Yes. yes. <laughs> and he even said, look, it wasn't totally my thing. Those are your people. He said, but geez, they're good people. What a you know, so gift. it's amazing. So he has just continued more like Honestly, it's, it's been a slow journey for him, mm-hmm. but when he has his next evolution, when he breaks through something, it is inspiring to watch. Mm-hmm. The only thing is then he starts coming back at me with my own wisdom. Now that yeah. does bite <laughs> me in the bum sometimes, I have to admit. He does. And it's the same with my girls, you know. Yeah. My, my daughters are just about to turn 21, would you believe, Ainsley? Oh, my God. Yes. No. And, no. yep, we're just... On the twenty oh. first of December, she's turning twenty one. I know you've known her since she was oh a little girl. Oh my god! Bella. Oh, I know. I've been watching your girls too, oh. and going, "Wow!" I know. But, and um, my eldest daughter is twenty eight. And yeah. whereas with my eldest daughter, she got the mum that used to run naked through the forest and dance under the moon and all that sort of stuff. You know, before I, be, you know, met Adrian and became yeah. a married woman and yeah, yeah, yeah. responsible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, and so she sort of, and in her teenage years, like she really switched off and rebelled and it's only sort of now in the last couple of years that she sort of started reconnecting 
was spiritually herself she Mm -hmm. had a lot of fear around it for a really really long time and I think for her that is generational on the on her other side of the family too they're all like quite religious and Catholic and okay. not that she's they've never been allowed to preach to her mm-hmm. or influence her in that way however she has got that in her genes yeah, fear absolutely like generations yeah. of fear right yeah and anyway so yeah she's just sort of started stepping back into it she's more open like to think look very slowly mm-hmm. but things like crystals she has a huge love of nature we all love the moon like all me and my daughters, we all have this natural, yes. amazing bond with the moon because they grew up with me going, yeah. oh, my God, look at the moon. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> so we actually as a family, including husband, went and watched the eclipse together yes, for the first so time ever. That. Yeah. But for the, that was the first time ever that we mm-hmm. did a family spiritual thing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, my youngest one just about to turn 21, she works four nights a week in a nightclub, so she's in that kind of yeah. switched-off phase. However, yeah. she does still maintain her connection to nature and the mm-hmm. moon. And I know that she'll come back because she was always the more inquisitive one. Yeah. In terms of my own journey influencing them, I, I, I know, and I say this without ego, I know that I inspire them to... Yeah. Be courageous to be more authentically themselves. They're both so feisty and they say what they mean. They Mm -hmm. speak their truth um, (laughs) and they go after what they want, Yeah, you know. It is. It's amazing. I just I feel like there's such wisdom in because I always think back to, you know, love it or hate it or whatever, the reality is most of the time, the mum of the family is the thermometer or the temperature mm-hmm. setter or whatever. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that I've been really, really aware of in my own journey to being um, like actually giving myself permission to want what I want, like mm-hmm. rather than putting mm-hmm. the layers of like, but that's not available or, or you know, or the listening to fear or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the permission, and I know that people don't need permission, but when people see you doing that for yourself, it, it's basically what's happening with Adrian. Like he's seeing you again yeah. and again, step yes. more into yourself, step into the power, you know. And I think one of the most powerful things about that is actually saying what I'm not available for anymore because with each <laughs> evolution, yes. right, I'm not available yes. for not showing my full self. I'm not available for yes. not speaking my truth. I'm not available for abandoning my needs I'm not available for you know Mm -hmm. pretending I'm small when I'm not I've got a tiger inside of me and the tiger (laughs) wants out to you know do whatever the tiger's meant to do um so that to me is the gold there because that closeness and again I come back to the same thing I kind of have in my mind about the business integration when you are your full self your husband your daughters your friends your community your you know everyone that you touch gets the fullness of you and so they can have a depth of relationship that they could never have had Mm. when you were not being your full self yeah this is what I think women kind of I don't know it's like oh but it's too scary to step into that and it's like but you're not being your full self so no one actually knows you so Mm. like you cannot tell me that you have truly intimate relationships if you won't give yourself permission Mm-hmm. to actually want what you want and live into what you want. And that's not, I'm, that sounds like I'm being really judgmental. I'm not, that's not the energy that I, it's just like you, again, you're ripping people off. Yeah. Right? Like you're yeah. ripping people off. How dare you? It's not about yeah. you. Get out of your own fucking way. <laughs> and I really hate it when there's, um, like I think boundaries are important. Mm. Um, when you're saying, when you were saying, you know, I no longer have time for this or I yeah. no longer have time for that. Um, I think as part of my own evolution, um, even though I've always been quite outspoken, you know, um, in the sense that, you know, if someone pisses me off, I've got no problem with saying, hey, fuck off. Mm. You know, that's I have no issue with that. I'm an Aries woman. And (laughs) and incidentally, literally my Chinese zodiac sign is a tiger. So (laughs) (laughs) me too. Yes, I know, I know, right? Um, so I've, I've always been quite outspoken in that sense, but now the if, if I've got something I need to say, it comes out in a different way and yes. and I don't need to yell or erect um, fences made out of barbed wire mm-hmm. to help people to understand things that I cannot 
or will not tolerate any further. Yeah. There's been a few conversations with my husband, for example, when I said, you know, sometimes we've had to have a Barney or whatever mm. for when he's about to burst through and yeah. evolve, right? There's been a handful of times in our 22 years together mm. and, and I used to scream and yell. Mm. I used to argue to get mm. my point across, yeah. to be heard. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas now I was, I've said to him before, I need you to hear me. I need you to understand that I will not tolerate that behavior from mm-hmm. you or this dynamic in our relationship for even another moment of my life. If you continue to behave in that manner, mm-hmm. we're done. Yeah. Yeah. And, I'm, and there won't be an argument, there won't be a fuss or a fanfare. I will just be done. And that is it. And like when I said it's only I've only had to say that a couple of times. Yeah. And I and I'm just using him as a, as an example, yeah, which he would love. Yeah. He would love. <laughs> um, no, but that's with anybody. Yeah. Where you know, I've had friendships that have ended, you know, which is a natural thing over the yeah. course of time because there are certain things, and particularly when it comes because I honor myself, mm-hmm. right? And if people aren't going to honor me in the way that I honour myself, mm. then it's not a true relationship. Correct, yeah. There's yeah. That means that there's untruths there. Mm. Mm. You know, my friends know, like my core group of friends know that um, my friendship, I give them everything. Like I give them my whole self. Mm-hmm. And they, if they're coming into my space, whether that's my energetic space, my home space, my business mm-hmm. space, mm-hmm. my circles, whatever, they know that they come in unapologi- unapologetically as themselves. Yes. There's nothing they can say to me that's weird. Mm. There's yeah. nothing they can say to me that it's is awesome. out of line or mm-hmm. if it is out of line, we talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, or, or if, if they come to me and say, look, am I being unfair about this or rah, 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 I will tell them. Yeah. You know, that it's and to me that's pure love right there. When you can speak and and interact in a way that is so honest. Yes, and respectful. And I don't have space in my life for relationships where I don't have that. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like maybe this is a tiger thing. I because I'm I very much relate to. I actually just did a um, a solo episode about that. Like being a bitch or beautiful boundaries was the question that I posed. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I really relate to even up to probably a couple of years ago, my default was um, you cross a boundary and I'll get really fucking angry, like yeah. re- like um, disproportionately, like, mm-hmm. you know, and I can easily look back now and go, yeah, conditioning and whatever. But um, I feel this and I do think it's partly the perimenopause thing as well is this it's a transition from the tiger going Rah, to that mm. quiet quiet power yes and it's yes being able to state what's true for you in a way that is assertive but not aggressive very different energy so much nicer to receive from the other person Mm -hmm. but also it's just like I don't need any drama around my boundaries this is just the boundary so either yeah yeah, we choose to have a conversation I just had a beautiful moment with a very old friend of mine where yeah, she did something that really, really hurt my feelings. And I now look back and go, you know what? I've actually ended like friendships by just walking away and never speaking to someone again, because I have not yep. felt that I could quietly mm-hmm. and not aggressively state that someone's crossed a boundary and it's not okay. And this mm-hmm. was a, like a very beautiful conversation that I had with this friend of mine where I was like, I just, I'm not available to be treated like that. And then mm-hmm. she was able to have the space to, you know, to express her perception of what it, what had happened. And it was just, it was such a beautiful healing moment of like, oh my God, I think I've just grown up in a way <laughs> of going from the, I'm going to rip your face off tigress yes. to yes. I'm sitting and I'm chilling under a tree and I'm just quietly stating that there's a boundary. Yeah. Such a beautiful thing. and such Because a you can say at that point, and it's up to you, whether you choose to stay in my life or not. Yeah, correct. If exactly. you're okay with, with this boundary. Yes. You know, um, yes. and, you know, and we can continue to grow and evolve together. Mm-hmm. Please stay in my life. If, yes. if I didn't want, if I no longer wanted you in my life, then you wouldn't be in it. Like, yeah. you know, I wouldn't give, I wouldn't give somebody 
the time to have that conversation. Yeah. If you, you know, so enough. yeah, exactly. That's such so, a beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Um, right, we haven't even delved into the magic of the magic, <laughs> but I <laughs> want to because it is so important. So, okay, so women that are drawn to you, they've got this mm, uh, awareness that they want something more. Yeah. And whether they're aware of it or not, they might have conditioning around like, you know, I don't want to be stepping into this weird woo whatever stuff. So mm-hmm. if I was a client coming to you and going, I am seeking something more and I've got this inkling that there might be more inside of me I can access, but I don't really know where to start. How would you mm-hmm. answer? Um, well, first of all, I come from a holistic point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, like, I don't necessarily talk about witchcraft with every one of my clients. Yeah. So when I say holistic, holistic, spiritual, grounded point of view. So mm-hmm. um, I actually will say to the client, okay, well, let's have a chat and we'll get to the bottom of of whatever's going on for you. Mm -hmm. And then using, um, I work intuitively. Mm -hmm. So using, I've got lots of tools in my tool belt, you know, as have you. Um, And that can be anything from meditation to reading cards to doing shamanic healing to, uh, yes, doing little rituals, meditation, whatever, right? Um, We will ascertain what it is that you need. Yeah. And because, um, you know, they're like, yes, it's true. A lot of my clients are witches or they're just opening them. They've just, you know, opening up to that path and they mm. have an interest. But mm. also a lot, probably an equal amount, honestly, are not. Yeah, They will have a spiritual awareness or a spiritual mm. opening. I mean, I have Christian ladies come and see me, Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and men. So, yeah. Mm. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's all about ascertaining what the client needs and mm-hmm. we apply the relevant medicine. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. I love that. I love the tool belt analogy because it is so much that, isn't it? Because it's like yeah. what's the, yeah, listening as someone who identifies as a healer and a helper mm-hmm. of humans. Um, yeah, being deeply connected to our own knowing or intuition about, you know, what to bring to the table when and, you know, to assist that evolution and always being respectful of the fact that people have their own time of healing and expansion and, you know, it's not our job. I look back at some of the sessions I had as a coach years ago and I think, oh, my God, I was so like, now we need to be doing this. And I'm like, fuck, I just, I love, but anyway. But like, that was probably right at the time though. Yeah, exactly. And okay, you know what? Because- um, you attract different people to what what level of understanding you have as well. So it's like that was not hundred percent. This is different. Yeah. And also, you know, I think that um, pre um, pre the last couple of years, and I don't like to refer to that at all much, but pre the last couple of years, mm. I think we were more about structure and the yes. working day and. Um, and being more rigid and more focused on time. And mm-hmm. I think the last couple of years has taught, like no. for those of us that are open to learning, it's taught us that we need to focus more on what's important and we need to go more with our own flow. Yeah. We need to be more in tune with our own cycles and the cycles of nature. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's why businesses like mine and and yours, you know, yeah. we survive because yeah. It, this is important where we've stepped into a whole new age we mm. are in the age of Aquarius and mm-hmm. what is that about it's about spiritual awakening like yep. mass spiritual awakening mm-hmm. and part of and I've said to people before like spirituality looks different for different people your spirituality might be that you get up at six o'clock every morning and go for a walk go on the walk. beach and yeah. soak in the sun and without even knowing you're doing it you're connecting with the elements grounding rebalancing that might be your spirituality yeah someone else's might be that they get up and sit in front of the altar every morning yes and you know so the point being we all grow and evolve I can't Mm. like you already know I've evolved so much over especially the last couple of years because you know what amongst the most troubling of times yeah I chose to become sovereign I literally made a choice, mm-hmm. I will become sovereign. Yeah. And I took myself away for a weekend, did mm-hmm. a reset mm-hmm. and came back 
and then basically stepped that was when I more even more fully stepped into the wholeness of myself when I chose to become sovereign and understanding that things that I would have said to clients then like a couple of years ago are so different to things that I would say now definitely yep Yep, yep. So different because I'm coming from a different a different yes, energy, absolutely. a different vibration, a different. I have a different point of view now, yeah. and different you know, wisdom to share. As do you, of, and different yeah. wisdom as yeah. do you. So you know, I mean, I look at. I know what you're saying because I look yeah. back at some things, like particularly, you know, Facebook things you posted on Facebook <laughs> ten years ago, and you're like, oh my god, how embarrassing, you know. But I've evolved. So I've grown. Yeah, you do. Like, you know, oh, look at me sitting up on a Friday night having a few cans of bourbon. Yeah, 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 Have yeah. a great night, everyone. Like yeah. I just proclaim to the world. Like, you know, <laughs> look at me. I'm I'm still a partier, you know, I'm up yeah. on a Friday night, whereas now I don't give a shit. No, um, exactly. You don't you know, need to like me or approve of me. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm just doing me. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. Um, so we evolve. We change. Yeah. One of the um, questions that I had, we didn't actually chat about this before we started recording, but has there been, do you, how much do you feel being in the, either leading up to in perimenopause, post-perimenopause, wherever you are, but that like transition to, I guess what used to spiritually be called like the, the crone or the wise woman stage of our lives. Do mm-hmm. you feel that there has been, an influence of that in your evolution or do you feel that that's quite a separate kind of, um, well, it's not separate obviously because we're all connected, but how do you feel about that? Um, It's a good question and I guess one that I've been I've been sitting on the fringes for this one for a while, I think, mm-hmm. and I've been trying not to look too deeply into it because mm-hmm. I actually don't know where I'm at either because, yes. um, like, I, I've gone and had all my bloods done, I know, and so I'm not exactly 100% sure where I am with my yep. with my cycle, Transition. right, and, yep. and putting it to you that there is another recognised phase of life mm-hmm. where from mother we actually step into Marga, mm-hmm. which is from 50 to 70, and then crone oh, from 70 onwards, okay. right? I don't know. So Marga. Marga is where we step if into that that wise woman healer phase of life, you know, mm. um, where we can actually do a lot of good um, physically, you know, if we need to mm-hmm. travel somewhere, if we need to physically help people yeah. with our wisdom or acqu- our acquired knowledge, our yeah. skills, we can, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I kind of think of crone as like you can still do all of that but yeah. also in a more relaxed or a different way, kind of like when you mm. become a grandparent instead of a parent. Yeah, gotcha. You know, okay. Yeah. Um, right. So so having, so being on 48, mm-hmm. And what I'm struggling with at the moment is the fit, like I have a fear around the physical um, mm. and emotional side effects. And I'm basing that off my mother's journey. Mm. And I'm so I'm trying to actually step out of that at the mm. moment, the fear mm. that I've got around that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, step, I am trying to step more into the, the wise woman, you yes. know, wise healer yeah. kind of. And, and looking at because I love where I'm at in my life in yeah. terms of you know how many times do you think oh I wish I knew then what you know what I know now and could go back in time but with all this knowledge and wisdom and confidence yeah. you know yeah. and yeah. power and um so yeah I think physically um physically you know I'm going through a transition mm. I can feel that within myself mm-hmm. um you know I I don't like the lessening of functionality in my in my body uh, or with my body with her you know confronting hey yes it's very confronting and I'm not enjoying that so you know but it, it sort of I'm looking forward to the marker stage in the sense that I think I will physically step more into the fullness of my being yes because it had it ha- is confronting mm. and and I look at my mother's again I look at my mother's mm. journey mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I've gained a lot of insight from that yeah um so yeah it's for me I'm in that I'm really in this transitional process pro at the moment mm-hmm. where I'm trying to marry in my mind with a lot of journaling and ritual and self-exploration yes. Um, yes, the physical, the mental, the emotion and, and the spiritual that comes with 
stepping into this new phase of my life. Yeah. I really absolutely. actually, this brings to mind, and this is mm. important, I knew the journey had begun for me yes. into the MAGA phase mm-hmm. when my youngest daughter left home. Yes, that's And yeah. so that was last year, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, she left home last year. And I thought she'd be with me for years yet because she's a real mama's girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, she left home and I grieved. I grieved so hard. I I sobbed like a baby for a week. I was Mm -hmm. heartbroken, right, even though I was the one that initiated just saying that. (laughs) Um, And I realised I've had a child at home with me for 27 years. 27 years. Mm -hmm. That's huge, right? Yep. And so that grieving process, I realised in that moment Mm -hmm. that I was beginning the journey into Marga. Yeah. So emotionally, I had already started preparing myself. Yeah. And I know that because I stepped away. So last year, I stepped away from my physicality a lot Mm -hmm. in the sense that I went very, very deep spiritually and very very deep emotionally Mm -hmm. and that's where the focus of my journey was so I gained a heap of weight I lost my gym mojo for a while and so with that has come aches and pains and you know all these new things and now my focus is switching back to the physicality Mm -hmm. right it's like I've done all this work yeah to prepare myself emotionally and mentally for where I'm about to go or where I'm heading into Mm -hmm. now it's time to bring the physical into alignment with that yeah as so um, I oh, so relating to the grieving thing. So I've still got one at home, my older uh-huh. one, but my younger one um, left at sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? As I wow. did, yeah, yeah, as I did, um, and very similar in personality. And like you know, I just want to do my own thing, and I want to be out yep. there making my own magic. Uh-huh. Um, and you know, as you have raising strong, independent young women who go after what they want, and I'm like, yes. but no, not when it doesn't suit me. <laughs> Yes. Stop, stop, not with it. And um, oh my God, the grief. Oh, oh, man. And that was only with one, but I was like, I'm not ready to be done with this phase of my life. I want you to be here so that I can take care of you and be connected to you. And oh my God, the um the stories that I had about, you know, she's gone and we're never gonna be blah blah. And in the end, best thing that she ever decided to do because our relationship is much deeper. Um, has loosened up some bonds of yeah some mm-hmm. places where I was overstepping and over boundary mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm deeply grateful for her having the wisdom to know that that was her path but far out man the grief and similar age some 47 and a half and the I've definitely no like physically I have no signs of perimenopause except the emotional end of things of like the rage and the anger <laughs> <laughs> that started coming up in the second part of my cycle. I'm like, whoa, um, where was I going with that? Uh, so I guess for me it's that um, oh, it's the deep surrender of the cycles. I mean, and yes. you and I both love nature. Cycles of life. Love the moon. Love yep. the balance that the universe is already in, yes. as are we. Yes. And this, so the natural I don't know, setting of the years of being able to have a baby if that's your desire, oh, sorry, or um, take care of, you know, at the active parenting phase. It's like fine. Yeah. But also feeling all the bloody feelings, like all feelings are welcome here. I am deeply in grief, like so oh. beside myself. <laughs> like Yes, literally. Broken. Yes. <laughs> Listen, um, your my story, your mm, story, like mine echoes yours, hundred mm, percent. Mm. But with my eldest one, she left. Mm. Um, she left at sixteen, then came back home for a year. And and I mean, when she left at sixteen, I've always been a protective mother bear. Mm. So letting her go was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And I yeah. cried for like eleven months. Mm-hmm. And she came back home for a year, and when she went the second time, it was with our blessing and properly, yeah. and moved into a proper house. Yeah. And she was a real asshole to live with. <laughs> so the parting, and because I'd already pre grieved, you yes. know, and I can say that, and she mm-hmm. can listen to this, and that's fine because she mm-hmm. knows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yes. Um, and I mean, she's not so much anymore. But at the time, we just clashed constantly, and as mm-hmm. you say it freed up so many unhealthy ties that oh, we had so between much. us. Yep. And yep. honestly, she, as I said, she's 28 now. We're yep. so close. Yep. We are so 
close yeah. like we're, we're like sisters we do so much together mm-hmm. like my daughters like my eldest daughter her and her partner love to come and hang out with us yeah. and I said to my husband the other night like they kept the buggers kept me awake until <laughs> half past two in the morning and I had a workshop to present the next day yeah, and I'm yeah, lying yeah. there thinking oh god they're being so so rowdy and so noisy but then my heart was happy because I'm like oh family and I said to hubby they could hang out with any of their friends tonight but they want to hang out with us yeah so it's been a blessing so Such when my thing. youngest went there was quite a big gap in between when they left. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm yeah. talking eight years or something, mm, right? Mm. Ten or, yeah, eight, nine years. Mm. And the grieving the second time, like, yeah, it was heart-wrenching because prepare yourself oh, when I your just, other baby goes. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 you know, your children will help you through that process. Because, And I'll tell you how Ainsley helped me. She, like, we went through so much healing in that time. We cried Mm. together. We talked openly together because we had a lot of unhealthy ties that were binding us as well. And then she came home one night for dinner and left a trail of crap in every room she visited. And I thought, and in that (laughs) moment, I stopped grieving, right? (laughs) Because I am no longer available for the trail of crap. (laughs) Yeah, because I looked at it all and I went, oh, my God, I don't miss this at all. No. I I don't miss this side of things. And because we've just done all this healing, right, together Mm. and communicated so beautifully and had such deep sharing together, I'm like, actually, it was in that moment I realised I could see how moving forward our relationship would become so much better like it did with my older daughter. And so my grieving was over. And the release and the relief about that. I definitely, yeah. It's wonderful. So it is, Mm. and then like I said, it was in that moment that I just went, holy shit, I've just, I've literally just moved from mother into Marga. So as I said, my, the physical pro process yes. of going through menopause or whatever mm-hmm. is slower to catch up. And I'm grateful for that, but the mental and emotional process of that already began last year. Yeah. You're starting the transition. So, so it, it, beautiful. it's beautiful and terrible and challenging and enlightening and painful and all the things. But as you say, it's another stage of life. What do we go through when we go from being um, tweens to teens? We go through so much emotional and physical, oh like yes. angst and yep. challenges and anxiety. And what do we go through when we transition from sort of, you know, between that 18 to 21 phase into the next phase of our life where yep. we're going to be, you know, getting a home and maybe having mm. children, maybe getting mm. married, maybe establishing our careers. Yep. That's hard as well because yep. everybody has a moment where they're like, what am I doing? Where am I going? Confusion, you know, it's just yeah. another transition. Yep. And and this is just another transition and I recognise it for that and what I did in that moment where I went, okay, this is what's happening and it, actually this can be a beautiful thing yeah. is I started to focus on the beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And also um, there's definitely an invitation there. As much as our mum's journeys can indicate on some levels what our experience can be it also doesn't have to be our story you are 100 percent correct you know that 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 you don't need to expect the same things I've been doing um I'm doing a specific yoga and breathwork training through someone in Ireland about supporting the stages of menopause and oh good I'll be looking forward to that thank you so so (laughs) like I'm so deeply grateful for stumbling on this training and I actually like I've had to be up from 8 p.m. till 4 a.m. to do it because it's in Ireland yeah. time. Um, but being in a circle, like already yoga teachers, so already, you know, very committed um, to holistic health and wellness in all areas and space holding and whatever, but to be in a circle of people like that who are also transitioning through perimenopause and some of them have gone through menopause and beyond and having a teacher with the depth of wisdom Um, that this person is um, I'm just like oh my god we need to be we need to be honoring all journeys through the transition the Mm. ones that are absolutely fucking terrible like from Uh a symptomology perspective including like severe mental health issues and suicidal ideation like that extreme we need to honor the people that sail through that transition with absolutely nothing we need to honor the fact that yes we've got generations of women before us but we also are living a very different 
existence on all different levels, like the work that you've already done on healing is, you know, and just to make it, um, oh, it's just exactly like this podcast. It's sharing the stories so people are aware. Like when you say you've got aches and pains, I'm like that is a key thing that perimenopause creates. Yes. The inability to keep up your, although you're saying you chose to go down a different area of health, but even, you know, not being able to keep up with this intense aerobic you know, hard hitting exercise that we sometimes like to do in our twenties and thirties, like all of those things. And it's just like, we need to start speaking about this because then it normalizes all the different, you know, versions of transitioning. And, um, and then obviously how you choose then, to cope with it too. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, the, the thing for me, the biggest thing that's come out of this training already, like I've got weeks to go, but um, is how absolutely imperative rest is oh just right and as two tiger women how hard has it been to teach know. yourself to rest well oh I've actually God. got written here I am here for revolutionary rest like because <laughs> yeah. to me that is a revolution because yes. I am always have always had the viewpoint of myself of like go 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 because I've got lots of energy and like yeah, you know, I've always been able to but it's at the cost of the health of my nervous system so it's at the cost yes. of my connection to myself, my ability to yeah. be present in relationships, my ability just to do something for the joy of it instead of attaching an outcome to it. And I think that's the invitation of perimenopause. It's like, well, your body is actually forcing you to slow down, mm-hmm. forcing. Now we yes. can fight the fuck out of it or we can yeah. go, all right, I surrender. This is a this is a stage. This is the next evolution. This is, you know, it's the cycle. The wheel continues to turn whether we like it or not, so we may as well just surrender. You've, um, uh, you've yeah. just helped me have an aha around that. Ah, Thank you. beautiful. Um, well, because oh, I was just going to say, if I can interject for a minute, yeah. that, um, when like that is 100% true what you're saying about um, everyone having their own journey. So as I said, I, I have had fear around repeating my mother's patterns with her yeah. journey. However, um, that's a revelation in itself for me is that she was a different person. She completely different to me. She wasn't open spiritually. Mm-hmm. She hadn't done any sort of healing work mm-hmm. or anything because I wasn't even offering it back then and mm-hmm. wasn't really in that circle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so she hadn't done any sort of healing physically. Her physicalness was very different to, yeah, to what absolutely. mine is, her physicality. Yeah. Um, so there are so many factors that were different for her yep. in comparison to what's happening for me right now. Um, we're two vastly different people. So so th- that was kind of the, the first mm. part, you know, of what you just said then. I'm like, well, yeah, actually. So that kind of takes the fear away a little. That, it's you not know, a done deal. Her story no. is not. And, I mean, one of the key things that I always believe, I think it was something, God, Destination Delicious days, like you're never a victim of your circumstances. You're only ever a victim mm. of what you believe is possible. So be careful what story you're Absolutely. writing yourself because her past does not dictate your future. Um, yeah. And you are, I would assume and and guess, and I hope that, you know, this is not offensive, but I would assume that you are more in tune yes. with your whole self. <laughs> Hundred percent, yeah. And so, therefore, you know, some of the pain, unfortunately, that I hear when people are talking about, like I say, the clusterfuckery, but yes. really, it's a rite of passage, just an invitation. It's a transition. We are changing yeah. biologically. Our estrogen drops, therefore, all of these things yeah. in our bodies change. Yeah. Um, but the invitation there is like it is a new stage of life. So, who do we want to be? What do we want to continue? What are we here for? Yeah. Um, and you know, just when our nests are emptying is also like we get to reconnect with our maid again in a different way. We, you know, we get to dive into our purpose potentially more, you know, juicily when we don't have that day-to-day sort of like caring responsibility. So it's like everything. Um, it's Yeah, I was just going to say, and my mum did not have the physical connection to her body that I do at all. Like she was so physically disconnected Mm -hmm. from her body and her inner self at the time when she was when started began the journey and you know um I mean now totally different story like she's been amazing but but so yeah it it helps and it makes me realize when we're talking about being in tune and in flow with our own cycles and our own journeys um you know 
on reflection of this conversation, I've already been prepared, started preparing for yeah, this, you know, absolutely. and it's all, the dots have all just connected for me. That's what, that's what's Beautiful. just happened, right? Yeah. Is that, hang on, actually, I think I, I knew it, but also not. I was conscious and not conscious. In, I flowed in and out of consciousness. And what my big aha was when you said about the rest thing, mm. because I, okay, so I've been having a little bit of a hard time with accepting, I've learned how to rest. Yes. But I've had a little bit of a hard time in accepting that um, how I work differently because, like you, I've always been go, 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 very goal orientated. I've got to get this done, this done, this done. Mm-hmm. Sometimes to the detriment of my family when I would mm-hmm. sit up on my computer until all oh, hours yeah. of the night to get yep. shit done and Parallel lives, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And, and so that, that became very, very important to me to always be busy. And even now I will say to you, I'm totally, I'm hyperactive. I've always had massive amounts of energy. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, resting to me was, was quite a difficult thing. And what I've been struggling with is over the last two years, how much I've retreated, right? Mm. For me, for self-preservation and because I'm a massive empath, I retreated from society like largely from a re- for a really long time because mm-hmm. I couldn't stand the energy out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but you know things have been quite good, you know, for quite a long time. Like this yeah. year, you know, yeah. I can I can go back outside basically. But there's a part of me that's still been struggling with the fact that I am much still much more reclusive than I used to be. So, you know, I, I'm more choosy about social engagements, where I go, what I do, who with, who mm-hmm. I hang out mm-hmm. with and all that sort of stuff. Um, and when I'm out, you know, there are times of year where I'm very out in terms of my business, like going to events and festivals yeah, and things yeah, like yeah. that, and I'm yeah. out. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, years ago I learned that as part of my own journey I need to have downtime after yeah, a big out time, yeah, right? Absolutely. I have to. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm an ambivert, yeah. ambivert, big time. Mm-hmm. So I, I knew that about myself. But there's been part of me that's like why have I been finding it so hard to get back into structured productive work days right because particularly when I wrote my book I taught myself to have days okay Tuesday and Thursday I'm going to write Mm -hmm. and for the last year I have not been able to do that Mm -hmm. I just can't Mm -hmm. and so I've been questioning myself have I gone too far on the other side of flow because you know it came so much about being oh staying in my flow and flowing from one thing to the next to the next and going with what felt right to do which as you know that's when you're at your most productive mm, and most yeah, magical juicy, because yeah. you're coming from your raw wild self right yeah, absolutely but there was there has just been this niggling in the back of my head you've been wanting to stay home a lot more than what you used mm-hmm. to you've been a lot more selective about what you will and won't go to like social events and things like that you're not you won't get back into that structured productive work day why are you resisting you know and I realized now I thought it was a lot to do with non-conformity because I've spent two years going yeah. I will not conform yeah, and yeah, yeah. and but then I'm trying to conform myself yeah exactly right and I'm <laughs> so I'm trying to make myself conform to myself and making and yourself I'm, wrong for what feels yes, good for you right now exactly yeah. and so I really struggled with that right mm-hmm. but now I also realize in talking to you it's been all part of the rest. It's yep. been part of me moving into this next phase of my life yep. where it then there it will be more balance. Mm-hmm. There will be more rest time. There will be time where I want to hibernate and be reclusive yep. more so than I want to be out. Absolutely. And I would say the extra bit on top of that from the little, like I've only just started this course, so I'm just sharing what's mm-hmm. sort of real for me at the moment. Like in the beginning of this podcast, I say, you know, we run out of fucks to give in midlife, yes. right? And I say yeah. that as a joke because that's how it feels. Like I'm like, no, nope, not available for that. Don't give a fuck yeah. what you think, right, right, Like I literally <laughs> feel like yep. I'm throwing fucks out left, right and centre. Um, well, no, there's no more fucks. To, whatever, you know. <laughs> no, you're out of fucks. Stay with that. I've got no, no fucks <laughs> left. I go to throw them out and they're not there. Anyway, um, but part of the biology of how we transition through different stages. So when... Mm-hmm. When we're in our, and you, you've spoken to this already, like the phases of life, like when we're in our early years, pretty much from the time of puberty, we are 
wired, literally brain wired, mm-hmm. etc., and hormonally wired to seek a mate, fall pregnant, mm-hmm. and protect family. At this stage of our lives, we are actually equally biologically wired to disconnect our need to actually have connection and nurturing of other people Mm -hmm. and reconnect to actually turning inwards and diving Mm -hmm. into ourselves. That's exactly what you're talking about. So the desire for more space and retreat and one of the things I just, you were reminding me, I had a um, really cool human design reading where so many things that are my natural thing, like the natural energizer bunny part of me, I'm like, oh, that's why that is. One of the things that um, was really very strong in all of the key gates was um, retreat, retreat and wait, rest and receive wait for things to drop in front of you you don't have to go and create anything and I was like oh my god like it feels like I that's what I say revolutionary rest I'm actually literally when we get off here just about to record a yoga nidra for my um, community called revolutionary rest because I'm like you are being called to get quiet and connect your own wisdom and stop looking outside of yourself and also stop looking to to old patterns of like productivity, even that. Yeah. That's a fucking story. To be okay in the world, I need to be productive. Who says, oh, shit, that's actually not even my voice. That's yeah. society and you've just spent the last two years rebelling against what you see as conformity and like you say, you're yes. trying to conform to the old story that society gave you when you were growing exactly up. Exactly, right. Well, you're not a clusterfuck. But is it when you look at it from the outside in yeah. and you un- unpack that, you're just like, oh, my God, that's so Oh, and, you know, like like you would find, so easy to see in other people and not in yourself. Anyway, that's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's the retreat. It's like we've been sold this idea that we have to be productive and seek approval and love outside of ourselves and be a particular way to be okay as a woman, as a mother, as a so much expectation and it's fucking exhausting and then your brain rewires to go I don't give a fuck anymore and you go well who I who am I without all this shit in my head somewhat yeah yes but isn't it wonderful when you find out who you are without all that shit in your head (laughs) it's like jazz hands (laughs) and you know what else I've just realized too yeah it's all part of this this is wonderful I've always had this like picture in my mind okay so practical magic the movie Yes. Right? yes, yes. How they've got their kitchen and then off their kitchen they have that amazing, beautiful Victorian greenhouse I've where they've got the big it. long trestle table and they have all the herbs and everything in there, right? Yep. So I daydream consistently about my forever home being like for us it would be a Queenslander, right? Yes, I'd yes, have yes. a Queenslander version yep, me too. with yep. a big greenhouse that literally I can walk yep. from my kitchen into that greenhouse. Yep. I can go in there and tend my herbs and I can make my potions and my brews and my spells and all the things, right? Yep. And I realise now I'm creating the space to do that. I'm actually creating my life by design because I'm making more time to be able to be in my glass house. Yep, exactly. And by letting go of of so much external stuff and making more time to, yes, retreat and be with myself, mm-hmm. I'm making the space to do that. Yep, exactly. Isn't and that coming back to what you were saying about the Margo, you said like becoming a wise woman and a healer. That doesn't yeah. come from getting out there and keeping yourself busy and hyper, no. you know, hyper no, vigilant no. and hyper whatever. It no. comes from the depth that comes from what is being called by you into existence. Okay, we could wax lyrical and we will after we stop recording. <laughs> but I wanted to hit one really, really important thing. So we talked okay. about before we um, started recording um, you were telling me a story about what happened between Christmas and New Year last year, and it is exactly <laughs> what we're talking about, is yes. getting fucking quiet and stop pushing, yes. and then something magical happened which we want to share with our audience. Okay. So I was telling Kylie earlier that um, it is a tradition for me between Christmas and New Year to take the week off, mm-hmm. and I basically sit up by the pool with my feet up or mm-hmm. in the pool and I journal and I write and I plan I plan my year ahead. Mm-hmm. Now, for, for many years, like more than 10, I've been using other people's planners, mm-hmm. like goal-setting planners. Literally, I print them out yeah, yeah. and I spend that whole week and it's wonderful. I love it. Mm-hmm. And then last year, 
I bought this same planner that I've been buying for, all, for a decade and I thought this just isn't resonating with me anymore. Um, and also that person, like, you know, um, I'd sort of, yeah, we're going on different paths, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and, and, and I'm like, but I need my planner. This is an important part. This is an important ritual for me. Yeah. Because yeah. I think of, of the majority of what I do in my life is rituals, right? Yeah. That's an important ritual. And anyway, so I'd said to my husband, right, this week I'm going to take it off. I'm not going to bloody work. I'm going to have my feet up. I'm going to do my planners and journal and just swim and enjoy life, right? So the very first official day of my holidays, I'm sitting there just minding my own business, trying to go into that relax mode, and all of a sudden creator, goddess, uh -huh. my own inner voice said, you need to make your own planner. You're not enjoying doing this one anyway, so why don't you make your own? And I went, holy shit, I need to make my own planner that's more in alignment with my own needs. Yeah. So next thing I said to my husband, ta-ta, I need to go off and create this thing. And he's scratching his head going, what? I thought you, you know? was on holidays. <laughs> I thought you were on holiday. I locked myself away in my bedroom for two days in the air con mm -hmm. and created this 25-page goal-setting planner, mm -hmm. right, intention and goal-setting. And it's so cool. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say that without ego, it is friggin' cool. I love yeah. it because I filled it out myself, and I loved it. It was more defined. Yes. It was more defined to my own needs, mm -hmm. and so I thought to myself, just for shits and giggles, I'll put it out to my community because yeah. I made it all professional and beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought I'll put it out to my community and share it because if I love it, then other people yeah. probably will too. Yeah, yeah. And I thought. Also, like I'll just do a bit of a test and I'll say, you know, you can you can choose to pay between five and twenty-five dollars and gave people like four different option payment yeah. options, right? Yeah. And my husband's like, don't put it out for five bucks. Everyone will choose five dollars. And I went, I don't That's think so. Not what happens? <laughs> because people place value in different, yes. like have different beliefs around value, right? So I put it out there. The very first, the first four orders I got, they chose to pay twenty five dollars. Yeah. And I ended up like making a bit of money from it out of just this thing, this yeah. idea, this channel idea, this divine wisdom, you know. Um, and so this year, and, and and it's just been such a joyous thing, getting so much feedback from people going, I love it. It's love exactly it. what yeah. I needed. Yeah. It was what I was looking for, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I sold more than I ever could have imagined. And um, and it's just been a really wonderful, magical thing to share with my community. So I decided I'm going to keep doing them. And this year I've created another one. I've added 15 more pages of content. So rituals and spells and mm. tips and all all aimed at helping us to stay connected with our magic and live our life by by our own feelings our own flow our own cycles yes. and you know basically designing the life that we want Oh, amen. And the perfect thing is when we looked at the podcast schedule, you guys will be listening to this sometime between Christmas and New in Year 2022 to 23. So I will make sure it's in the show notes. Um, you can also find Bella online at www.wicked.com.au, W-I-C-C-I-D. I will link that, but for you guys that don't look at show notes, go and find Bella on Facebook. Thank it's you. been a freaking joy to reconnect oh. to you. I need oh, to go goodness. journal now because I've had so many ahas myself in this conversation. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's just been, like I said in the in the intro, it's been such a joy. Like I very often I'm connected to people that have, you know, been inside of programs some years ago. And yeah, continuing to see people just keep on saying yes to themselves, yes to themselves, yes to themselves. And you know, the depth that you've brought out into the public eye that you know we saw yes like the people close to you saw um and to have it resonate so so beautifully with your audience is just such it's such a magical thing to witness so thank you thank you for well, being here thank you and I just again I just want to say you were such a big part of that you were one of my early mentors and you were no, just the work that we did together by you showing up and sharing your truth at the time, you know, mm. when you said before, oh, I look back and go, oh, bloody hell, I can't believe I said that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to understand that, you know, at the time what you were sharing was so perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. And it it literally unlocked so much in me and helped me to let go of so much of my fear. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass because I don't do that to anybody, but I literally mean it. You were one of the most important mentors for me 
were and are in my journey. Like, honestly, so much of what I've done is because you helped, you got in my face and, and yeah. well, yeah, like literally. So what if people don't meat. like what you have to say? Like, stop procrastinating, you know, get your shit done. And an ID. You like seriously, I I, I can remember at our destination delicious day. Yeah. Um, one time and you know, you're like, what's your biggest, what's your biggest block? And I said, I procrastinate. Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you do. Why do you procrastinate? And basically, long story short, we got down to the point where I revealed that I was afraid of success because then people Mm -hmm. would all be looking at me and then Mm -hmm. they might not like what I have to say. Correct. So, you know, and and over the years, I've been able to do a lot of healing and belief work around what we uncovered in Mm -hmm. that session, which has all helped me to evolve to the point where I am now. Ah. That's a true story. Been a fucking pleasure, honestly. Yep. Because I just, you know, come down to it. If you didn't heal your fear, then the world doesn't mm-hmm. get your magic. And it's not about us. It's about what we can offer. So exactly. So thank you, Miss Kylie. Oh, thank you. That was a deflection, a wasn't it? Thank you. Gratefully <laughs> received, my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See you, darling. <laughs>Well, there you have it, beautiful one. Another inspirational episode. And thank you so much to our guest from today for sharing their journey and leap of faith. So many takeaways, as always. I would love to know what your favorite thing that we discussed or that hit you between the eyeballs to invite you into your own expansion or leap of faith was. Share it on Instagram or Facebook. You'll find me at Kylie Patchett. And I would love it and be so honored if you take the time to leave a review on any of your favorite podcast platforms about this show or the podcast in general. And finally, if you have someone in your life who is another midlife maven who may just need some reminding that she is a powerful, magnetic, amazing woman and that she absolutely deserves the life that she craves, please share us. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.